change to the advanced setting. All right, are we live? I think we're live. It Is anybody out there? Can anybody hear us? Yes, I think we're live. We tried to have the phone horizontal, but we needed yeah. to change it to vertical. But anyway, hello everybody and welcome to our live stream. Hi. Coming to you today from Nuku Hiva in yep. the Marquesas Islands. We've got these ridiculous <laughs> hats on, even Beautiful though hats. it is so freaking hot. I know, out I probably here. won't last very long. <laughs> but first things first, uh, somebody Jeez. was very kind and they brought by this ice cold Balboa the other day. I haven't seen a Balboa since we were in Panama and they must have sailed her with it and they thanked us. So thank you to you. And cheers. cheers. <laughs> So it's really good to be here. Yeah. Um, should we try to change it in the nope. settings? I think we should just go with it. Okay. <laughs> we were attempting to do it horizontal, but I know it's an advanced setting apparently. And we're not very advanced. Here we are. <laughs> uh, so yeah, today we're just here to chat and answer your questions. And uh, a huge thanks to all of our patrons yes. for submitting the initial questions to get things started. I think we've got some really fun ones. Yeah. Uh, but first, what have we been up to, Kaz? We, what are we doing here and why are we here? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in the Marquesas because it's the hurricane season. Cyclone. Cyclone, sorry. This is cyclone season and it's El Nino year here too. So everybody's pretty freaked out and the weather has been a little bit. It's been really rainy too down in Morea and really squally in the Tomotus. So we decided to sail up here um, and it's a beautiful place. It is. It's, it's been fantastic. a festival here. That's part of the reason why we Matava. come. Yes, that we came up here early to, to uh, be part of that festival is every five years, I think something like that. Mm -hmm. Every and four years. Every four years, yes. And it's just been a blast, like cultural explosion. It was it's, dancing, drums. Yeah. The whole purpose of the festival is to pass on the culture and the drums and the music and sculpture and carving to the younger generations and so it was yeah. a very kind of like local event although we were invited uh to be here yeah it was yeah. Uh, it was mostly they, they put it on mostly for themselves which yeah. i thought was actually very cool yeah, it was and, super uh, special. we just put up some pictures on instagram and facebook i think mm -hmm. to show you a little bit about what it was like yeah and my cool. mom is also here mormor is here so it's been amazing she's been here for two weeks now and it's just been super super nice for us to get a little bit of time to do all the things that we usually do not have time to do <laughs> <laughs> because she's been taking Sia and they've been just hanging out and yeah. stuff so much so we're going diving tomorrow we're yeah gonna go scuba diving tomorrow i think hopefully. there's a lot of hammerheads i know outside of the space so we're hoping so. to see those cross our fingers for and, that uh, yeah i am so boiling in this house so, <laughs> <lose the, laughs> sorry that didn't last very long i know we need to use those like horn things that isn't a hat. It's so ridiculously hot here. It's yeah. crazy. And we had to put up the cockpit enclosure to block the wind. Yeah, this because is crazy. the only really downfall of these places in the Marquesas is there's no protecting reef like there was in the Tumotos and in Tahiti and Bora Bora. So it is rolly. The ocean swell just comes in here and the boat goes crazy. And so right now we're stern tied to keep the bow into the swell, which is amazing. We had the flopper stoppers up for a while, but even yeah. with the flopper stoppers, it was still, or the rocker yeah. stoppers, I guess, yeah. it was Unbearable. not great. <laughs> and so now we're with our bow into the swell, but now the breeze is heading us on the side of the boat. And so yeah. we get no breeze. I think we should, we have decided to do a little stats oh, yeah. of the year. So we thought in the end of the year, it could be really cool to just like throw out some funny stats. Um, so we prepared some, but also please, write in the comments mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if you have any stats that you would like us to maybe uh, yeah talk about okay um, so first first one I'll do the first one here skip okay. veil so this is this is a very important question yeah, and this is all from our patrons that send out like really nice questions and we were able to we're spend gonna, some time on kick them, off so. with those. yeah uh, skip from North Carolina some really important stat questions how many margarita parties did you have in 2023? Okay, so I actually wrote them down. There was a bunch in the Sea of Cortez. We had them arriving into Fatu Hiva. Uh, we had Kaz's birthday party in Tahawata, uh, Roria, 
with our friends on One Life. We had one of Fourth of July and the two motos. Yeah. Pretty much, I counted 12 that I could remember, which means we're averaging one margarita party per month. Yeah, we've had which, some really which is pretty good. good. I mean, that, I, like if we have a couple of margaritas on our own, I don't count that as a party. It's like when we actually <laughs> have a margarita party. <laughs> Uh, and then he a follow-up question. What is your favorite tequila for margaritas? Well, honestly, it's whatever we have in the bilge <laughs> And in this case what we found before leaving Mexico was Sam's Club uh, Members mark silver tequila in the biggest mm -hmm. bottles we could find which were 1.75 liter yeah. bottles um, So yeah, I don't know do anybody else have some favorite tequila brands out I know there? there's a lot of good tequila out there, but honestly here we'll take whatever we can get <laughs> and the yeah. still doesn't make very good tequila no. like that's the one thing that we really can't make it good is good tequila and yeah. so we just buy it where we can yeah all right up next guys okay uh, uh, highs and lows for the year what was yeah. what was your absolute high so the highest high and the lowest low uh, i'll start with the highest high so it's a little bit ironic when i think about it because my highest high was arriving into the marquesas after the passage like in from the Mexico. Fatuhiva. Yeah, we yeah. arrived into Fatuhiva and it was just like we had been out at sea for 19 days and I was just so stoked to be close to land. That was a very special moment. Uh, and my lowest low was actually arriving into the Marquesas <laughs> <laughs> after sailing up here from Tahiti and Marea and to the Timotus and arriving in here a couple of weeks ago. That was my lowest low. It was it was a lot of things that didn't feel good with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, we, had, we, <laughs> we had a tough passage. Yeah. It's, it's basically a thousand miles of upwind sailing. Yeah. And even in the best of times, that sucks. And we, we just, you know, we've been beaten into it for a long time. We finally got here and we were so looking forward to having a nice, calm, comfortable yeah. anchorage. And we arrived and it was like, I don't know, it was like living inside of an amusement park ride. Like the waves were crashing around and it was all mu mixed and confused seas and they were slamming the back of the boat and then they'd slam onto yeah. the side and then it was raining and it was hot and it was we were just like, oh it my was God, so much what, bugs what are we doing? And just then, like unbearably amount of bugs. And like, yeah. actually when I p put down the anchor, Sierra looked down and she's like, what's wrong with the water? <laughs> Cause we came from like crystal clear water, right? Like if you've seen the latest video in Tahan Air, it was just like so clear like gin clear and this water here is just brown like you can't see like anything yeah the viz is like one foot so it was unfortunately. it was pretty brutal but yeah that was i would say that was my highest and lowest yeah mine too yeah i, I agree with you yeah. getting here and getting here yeah. a few months later again also i got food poisoning oh yeah that that's, was that's true horrible that was really too. bad that was in morea and that was it was like a tough week it was two days where i thought i was gonna die and then it was not good so that was pretty low low too uh yeah okay. that would be my toughest for sure and then should we do some random ones uh sure well dave crombie just asked oh, yeah. how many liters of diesel have you consumed and where do you get it there uh so since that's funny that you asked because i just did those those numbers oh really uh so where is that right here Doo -doo -doo -doo. so how much diesel we've used this year so in the entire year we used 1018 liters of diesel fuel so that's about 270 gallons uh, and that includes all the time in mexico that includes the full 12 months huh? Um, yeah. I don't think it's that I don't think it's that much we only motored three hours that's including the t that's including diesel to run the generator uh, for rare. filling dive tanks uh, on the way to uh, yeah we didn't Marquesas. only motor for three hours the whole year no, no, no a little bit more <laughs> not, not a lot though we've had some great sailing <laughs> yeah uh, but but I don't know what that is per month but what if you divide a thousand by 12 it's it's under a uh, hundred liters a month yeah not bad 20 good. 25 gallons a month mm -hmm. less than to run our whole boat in our whole house yeah I can't see the comments coming in here, but they must be coming in, right? Uh, I think that they are coming in. Do, 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 do. Let's just yeah, make sure. Be. I think I see them. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're rolling in here. Okay. Uh, okay, so 
It's always interesting with these live streams. Like you never I've got really so many know windows what's open. going on <laughs> and the time changes and stuff. But it's really cool to have so many. I see that it's like 200 people watching. Awesome. So that's awesome. It's when, really okay, here's a question. When will Kaza complete her circumnavigation? Is it oh, planned yeah. for the next season? So I would complete my circumnavigation in the Solomon Islands. And when we will get there, I have no idea. Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. Right now, uh, we got the long stay visa here. I can definitely, I can stay indefinitely because I'm from the European Union and Sierra as well. But Brian is kind of piggybacking on us, which worked really well for a year visa. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we can renew it for another year. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how long we stay here and when we decide to I think we'll, we'll spend we'll spend a full year here yeah. and then we'll just see what feels like. Yeah, I... I love this place. I really love it's this place. It's one of those special places and I, I just remember after being around the entire world and then being back here, you just realize how special these islands are. And Especially the reefs the and the sea life and the yeah. clear water and the people and the yeah. food and you know, now that we have uh, the, the satellite internet, uh, it makes it makes yeah. it's a game changer for our lives and able to, to work and do the videos and do everything from anywhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. There that. is another question. Where do we get the oh. diesel from uh, that, I, that I missed? Oh. Uh, the last time I we got diesel up. was in Tahiti. Yeah. Uh, so we, we fueled up in Tahiti uh, two months ago. They have some here too, but you're limited to like, what was it? 25 oh. gallons. We're limited to 100 liters. Yeah. Per boat. And we don't really know for Because there's a long. fuel strike in Tahiti right now. Is there a so. fuel strike? What does that mean? That means that they're not putting any fuel on the boats to come here. That's why, that's why they're limiting the fuel for us. Why do they do that? Because otherwise there won't be enough fuel for the locals, for the buses, for the cars, for the trucks. Oh. Yeah. So we're, we're sort of limited. Okay. That's okay. We'll yeah. Live. Uh, okay, I've got another question here. This is from uh, Sherry and Robert Michi. Uh, wondering a breakdown on annual spending, uh, including maintenance, repairs, replacements, insurance, mooring. Well, it just so happens that I did these numbers for the, uh, and everybody loves money stuff, right? Yeah. For the CNBC article. And when I gave them these numbers, it was a little strange because they excluded a lot of these numbers and they just took our general living expenses. So these are actually the real, real numbers. Okay, here we go. Number one, monthly internet, Starlink, 250 bucks a month. Our utilities are basically nothing. So water, heat, electricity, because we get all of our stuff from solar and we live on a boat, so we don't have to pay those types of bills. Boat insurance, comes up to $718.50 a month. I calculated our groceries. We're spending uh, on average uh, $1,247 per month on groceries. Wow. Uh, it's more expensive here in French Polynesia. For sure. It's about two to three times as expensive as it was in Mexico, Yeah. but that's our yearly average. Uh, eating out, we're spending on average about $415 a month, probably a little bit more Sometimes, sometimes we'll go a month yeah. or two without eating out and then we get to Tahiti and Morea and we wake up and go nuts. <laughs> uh, like miscellaneous entertainment, like tours, shows and stuff, $380 a month. Diesel fuel, $126 a month. Gasoline for Maggie, the dinghy, $123 a month. Uh, our cell phone bill, $114 a month. Uh, maintenance, repairs and parts for Delos, this is a big one. Keep in mind that we do all of our work ourselves. Yeah. still comes to $911 a month, averaged over the year. I think that number would be two or three times as much if we hired somebody to do our work yeah. or more. And then health insurance for everybody, including my plan for being here in French Polynesia, your and Sierra's for being outside of Sweden, yeah. $376 a month. If you add all those up, it comes out to $4,660 a month. I mean, that's less than five grand a month. I don't know if that's... A I lot, think the health little. insurance too is very low because in Sweden health insurance is not that much yeah, compared and because to the US. I'm out of the US like, yeah it's not that much yeah. okay uh, yeah so uh, I don't know what do you do think I, do anybody else know does how that much sound they high, spend low? a year how or does that, year how does that compare to your budgets yeah would you spend 4600 bucks a month on, now we, we own Delos uh, and we don't have a mortgage anymore we paid that off so yeah. that's pretty much all of our expenses 4600 bucks a month yeah yeah it'd be interesting to see okay uh what, what else you got on what there? else uh scariest weather 
we've had. Um, I would say it's probably we haven't had that many kind of really intense weather systems this year. Uh, I think everything was pretty controlled across the path, like on the passage. And even though we had some rough weather, it wasn't really like scary. The scariest I would say is when we were going, it was, I think the latest video, right? When we were going in Tahanea and we had to move anchorages within the atolls and there's all of these bombies and it was like blowing 30 knots. It was raining, so you couldn't see anything. And you know, it's like a minefield of bombies out there, which is like really shallow stones uh, that you could potentially hit with the boat. And that is stressful. Yeah, so just because the visibility was terrible so bad so see that was stressful yeah that is stressful like not because then bad. you're just relying purely on the charts and the google earth overlays yeah. uh which is not ideal you really want to be doing visual navigation in those yeah. areas mm -hmm. yeah uh okay i have a little announcement here uh we did a uh tag a friend winner instagram contest oh, yeah. uh did you guys and, see that one? <laughs> and what that was is it's it's like an awesome last minute holiday gift. So if anybody is looking for a last minute holiday gift for their friends, you can head on over to svdallas.com forward slash shop. You can grab a gift card and uh, yeah, then they can get 20%. whatever they want. Rash guards, hats, it applies yeah. to everything um, in, uh, in the shop and get it anytime they like next year. Mm -hmm. uh, we ran a contest. It was a tag a friend winner and I would like to announce the winner now. Uh, so congratulations to Freediver Brian. If you're watching, awesome. If not, we're going to send you a message on Instagram with all <laughs> the information about what you won. So thank you for tagging a friend and thank you for participating and congratulations on winning the contest. That's really cool. Yay. Thank you everybody for sending like in the, for commenting on that and stuff. It's really fun to do those every now and then. So here's a question. Uh, if you were outfitting a new boat, would you get a generator or a solar wind and lithium sufficient these days mm. um, okay so that's a sort of a two-part question the answer is we very rarely use our generator anymore uh, we're actually we actually have a video coming out specifically about this now about the amount of power we generate from wind and solar and it is enough for us we generate about 7.4 kilowatt hours of power which is enough to run the boat. We have uh, induction cooking, we have electric oven, the toilets are electric, basically everything on Dallas is electric, stove, toaster, ice machine, yeah. fridges, everything. Uh, and so we're able to be energy independent here in the tropics when the weather is good uh, at anchor and also when sailing. Now the caveat to that is if we were to move out of the tropics either north or south where we would get you know a, a less of a, a angle to the sun or in the winter time where we have less daylights or even here where we get a few rainy days like there was yeah. a day or two uh, or a few times in morea when it, it was raining for like four or five days straight and after about the third or fourth day of that the batteries are just getting lower and lower and lower and lower and then you really have no choice except to either turn stuff off or put more power into the batteries by by running the generator yeah. uh, the other part of that is when we're doing a lot of diving and we're filling dive tanks uh, the dive compressor is electric and it takes about 2.3 kilowatts uh, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to fill one bottle so if you're filling two tanks for us to do one dive together, yeah. that is about, let's just say two and a half kilowatt hours of power. And so we've just burned 30 something percent of our overall daily power production on just filling dive tanks. And so whenever we fill tanks, we run the generator. Yeah. Um, so I think if I, were, if I were to do it again, I probably would not, or build a new boat, uh, I would not put the same type of generator we have, an AC generator, I would put a, a uh, smaller uh, DC power generator and just specifically to charge the batteries as quickly as possible and then use the inverters because the we have six kilowatts of inverter now that's enough to run everything that we do um, on the boat uh, I guess the only thing is AC too we don't really run AC very much but when we do it is super nice and for that we'd use the generator yeah um, yeah so that that answers that one uh, do you still have plans for Delos 2.0 uh, 
Yes. Uh, <laughs> I can't talk about it just yet, but yeah, we're having things, some things, dreams and uh, dreams some are ideas. coming together. We're yeah. moving in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for that. And yeah. Uh, I want to give a shout a shout out to uh, Ryan. Oh, Super Ryan, Ryan is there. Hi, I Ryan. Think, uh, <laughs> Ryan sent me a message earlier. He's watching uh, with his family. Oh, cool! That's awesome. And we miss we miss you, Ryan, and family. Yes. Mr. That's... Crawley, you're a good guy. <laughs> Uh, okay. Oh yeah, what happened to the, I've seen a few ones, what happened to the turd? The, turd. the whale turd. <laughs> the whale turd. So we basically have to take a little sample and send it in somewhere. And we haven't really, like here, you can't really send it in somewhere here. So I think we're gonna... We're just, we're just waiting. Yeah, we're doing the waiting game where we fly somewhere where we can actually like send it to a lab like in the US or something. But we don't really want to send it all the way from here. I don't know. Or yeah. take it to an expert in person. That would be even Or if cooler. they try and run away, I can snatch it back with them. And then we'll you wouldn't really send know. the whole thing, though. No. I think send a little <laughs> bit. Even like, a little no, bit could it's be not worth real. Like hundreds of dollars. Yeah. yeah, but you can send like a tiny bit. A tiny bit. Like how small? Like, like this tiny small. bit? Like tiny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, what else do we have? Most embarrassing moment. I was thinking about this oh, one this, earlier, yeah. and I don't really. I couldn't think of anything. I mean, I must do. Oh, I got. I got time. something. Oh, you got something. <laughs> it was when we uh, <laughs> we were in the next bay over, which is Daniel's Bay, and there's this waterfall hike there and the bugs are terrible there so you pretty much have to like dress head to toe to, to avoid being eaten by bugs and so I had on like my adventure pants and I had like my long shirt on and my hat and everything and I was flying the drone and I was like carrying Sierra in the backpack and like I kept on having to squat down and pick something up and then I was squatting down and cousin and Hannah just start looking at me and laughing because I didn't realize it but my my pants had like ripped <laughs> right in the in the seam it's in the crotch weird. from <laughs> squatting down so many times and then it was just just because you didn't wear underwear because <laughs> you didn't have underwear it was well, who just hanging underwear? out yeah oh my god i <laughs> laughed so, so hard that, and then and then of course it was in like all the videos because i hadn't noticed and everything and it was just like had to blur all that it was it was hilarious <laughs> That was my embarrassment. Well, moment. I haven't really done anything like that. I have been feeling that when I'm filming, like, talking into the camera lately, I've been having a lot of, like, food and stuff around my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, like, looking at it afterwards, I'm like, funny. ooh. So, yeah. I don't know if that's a very embarrassing moment, though. It's just weird. Yeah. Anyways. Do you know how many videos we released this year? Uh. Well, we typically do one per week, right? And we skipped yeah. two or three weeks, I think. So let's say forty nine. Yeah, I think so. That's pretty crazy. It's yeah. been a, it's been a really cool year, though. I feel like we've it's met. It's been a fantastic. Year. Yeah, just the passage and like all the friends that we have hung around with here, like in the French Polynesia, and just it's it's been a very very special time, and it's also been very cool to see Sierra, just like grow like we were discussing how much she's changed from we, we just got a question where is sierra oh where is she sierra she's downstairs playing of course more she's more like, i don't want to be on your live stream can you bring can you bring sierra out please she's being requested hopefully i don't know what she's doing down there she's, she's been doing a lot of drawing lately yeah playing yeah her speech has just taken off and yeah she says so she's many cute things so like we were, we were playing hide and seek the other day and I said, Sierra, you're really good at hiding because she found this place in the builds to hide. And she says, yeah, I'm a hiding expert. <laughs> I'm like, where did you learn? To... Yeah, she's saying so much funny stuff all the time. She has a really good sense of humor. She's and it's just been really fun to, yeah. Like if just... I get upset, she'll say, dad, it's okay. Stuff happens. Just calm down. Like... Take a deep breath. <laughs> and I know it's exactly what we're saying to her, right? Yeah, so exactly. It's just, yeah. It's just repeating us. Also, so I saw some questions about what if we speak uh, Swedish to her. And yes, so I want to, if we at some point move to Sweden or something, I definitely want to just like have her completely understand the language, even though that most of the new words that she's getting is in English. Um, I speak Swedish with her 
not in the videos because I don't want to dub it. It's horrible. Uh, or like dub it with like subtitle. It's really bad. So, and when we're filming, I speak English, but ev all the other times I speak Swedish. And now when mommy's here, we're, it's more Swedish. So now like a lot of new words she's saying now in Swedish. So yeah. it's really cool. Very cool. She can understand and speak a little bit of both. What is our long-term education support for the Nugget? Homeschooling? Um, I mean, when it comes to that, I think we just, there's a lot of good homeschooling uh, programs, especially in the U.S. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to that, we from just have US. to, yeah, from the U.S., yeah. sorry. It's not actually, I don't believe it's actually legal to homeschool under Swedish law, but because Sierra is a dual citizen, we can do it under U.S. law. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really don't know yet. We really haven't figured that out. Uh, yeah. Maybe it'll be a combination. I think, you know, we're... Yeah. We're, uh, we're building this, uh, re refinishing this house in Sweden mm -hmm. uh, at Karen's mom's place out on the farm. And uh, it could be a, a time where we are able to spend some time there for her to go to school. And then we'll come back to the boat to Delos in the South Pacific yeah. and uh, continue her education there. We'll make it up as we go. Yeah, but it's, a, it's good options and we just have to see where we are and how it works. Uh, here's one. Uh, how many jerry jugs do you have for diesel? you have on board uh i carry 100 liters so 25 gallons as a reserve supply that's always in the locker and then if we're someplace where you can't actually pull delos up to a fuel station which is most places here i use those to go to shore and i bring back 100 liters at a time yeah we have a 600 liter tank and it very rarely ever gets under half so. yeah uh, another patron questions that we actually had was how many people are subscribed to our channel compared to how many people are actually uh, watching and yeah, yeah. it That's was with, I looked you, that up. you looked that up yeah right? so uh, about 60% of the people that watch our videos are not subscribed to the channel uh, and so 60? yes yeah, 60% it's just over half oh wow uh, and so if it would be really cool uh for those to get those numbers close to yeah. a half i think it, it helps no. <laughs> no it actually no, really it does, does. Really help us. it does help us um it helps us like you know for youtube to know that we're active and that people want to watch our videos and it helps you to see the notifications of when we post up new videos uh, and it's just it's just yeah. good in general. So if you're watching this right now and if you like the video, you haven't subscribed, please, please do. Yeah. And if you are subscribed, please leave a comment and Thank like you. the video because <laughs> it really does help yeah. engagement. YouTube is a weird, wild beast. It's a crazy platform. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah. We, we do our best. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lot of fun making the videos, and we feel very kind of grateful uh, and fortunate that we're able to to live this lifestyle and to share it with you all yeah um, it is really thank amazing. you for watching which is what makes it possible for yeah. us to continue yeah it yeah. is and we've had some amazing like i don't know just the the support over this year have been really really cool and it yeah it, it's a beast to handle all the videos and dealing with everything and especially like you know the all, every, all the work that we need to do and then also like family life and Sierra and just I think it's something that we always talk about and we always kind of just like in some way try to figure out different ways or better ways to do it but I think just in general we love it and it is something extremely special and to have so many people involved and watching it's, a lot of fun. it's really really cool so if it wasn't we that. would have stopped doing it a long time ago probably you would think yeah <laughs> Here's a question from David Levine. Hey Brian, how's oh. your Swedish? Hey, hey Brian, who are the insane Scott? I don't know, I just made that up. I don't know, I'm actually quite embarrassed. I think my Swedish is very bad. It should be better. My excuse is that every time I start to learn, we leave Sweden. Like every yeah. time I start to really get in the mindset, we leave Sweden and then we're speaking, like trying to speak Spanish or now we're in like French territory French and now I'm trying so to do that. French is incredibly Oh my difficult. god, I don't know if any of you guys speak French, but if you do, Good wow. For you. It's impressed. so hard. <laughs> I really really struggle. So, yeah, it's it's been difficult here and it's very little English and it would have been really really cool to speak French, but it's just and as soon as I 
they speak French to me, the little Spanish I know just pops out and then it's just <laughs> even more confusing. even the right language. <laughs> <laughs> Donde esta el baño? Oh my like, god, no. <laughs> it's so bad. It's a hard one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so what, what else do we got in here? Uh, 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 Is Santa gonna visit the boat? Yes, we have a Santa that, whole that. outfit, like with the beard and everything. Oh, Jamie Johnson. Jamie Hadley John wants to know if Santa will visit Sierra on the boat. Yes, absolutely. For sure. And because Mormon is here, we actually in Sweden celebrate on the 24th. So we'll probably have two Christmases. Yeah. Or mostly celebrate on the 24th and then like, yeah, have a little celebration on the 25th too. So it'll be fun. Double Christmas. Yeah, Sierra is really into it now. She's been making so many presents. She loves it. <laughs> and she's talking about Santa all the time. So yeah, for sure. This is the age where it's just incredibly fun to do stuff like that. Uh, okay, what do we else do we have? What else you got on your list there, guys? Scariest moment this year. Didn't we do that with the, in the with the bombings? No, that, that was like that the was scariest the, weather. Oh, the scariest weather. This what is like the scariest, scariest moment? moment. I think I definitely oh, have God. two scary okay. moments where I was like, holy. Uh, one was definitely. Did you guys see the video when we did the grouper spawning dive? Uh, we did a oh, night yeah. dive at. So it was basically a six knot current sucking you out into the open ocean. It was night, so it was pitch black and we, it was blowing 25 knots and we were at very close to the reef. So it was these breaking waves and we did the dive. We all like, we did pretty good. Everybody did good. We saw the group responding, but then when we are going to pick up like by the uh, dive boat, it was extremely gnarly. Like it was, we were so close to the reef and it was literally like breaking waves over us and you had to just like jump into the boat. I, yeah, I was hectic. happy everybody survived and that nobody got hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it was really hectic. Yeah. What, what, do you have any scary? I, I, I'm not going to do my scariest, but I'd rather do my stupidest thing I've done. Okay, what was the stupidest? It probably happened yesterday, actually. The oh, stupidest yeah. thing I've done oh. all year. <laughs> oh my god, it's so, so bad. So we have, we have some friends. Our friends from uh, Eric and Warren and We Sail are back in the U.S. right now, and they're flying here. And when everybody, whenever somebody flies in, like if they offer to bring stuff to you to like be your mule, like spare parts for the boat or something you need, then you order it to their address, and then they fly in with it because. It's the, by far the easiest way to get stuff here. And so I've been ordering like a lot of things to their address, some small, some big, just all sorts of random stuff. And uh, like last week I got this text on my phone and it said, hey, your delivery uh, address is not valid. Your package has been sent back to the post office. Please click this link. I clicked the link. It looked exactly like the USPS site and it said, okay, here are your re-delivery options. We can update it for you. There's a processing charge of 30 cents and I should have been like, well, that, that doesn't sound right. But like, you know, I looked at the website and I even checked their SSL certificate and they had one and it was like really well done. So I enter my credit card number and then it says, oh, your, your credit card has not, like has been declined. I'm like, okay, well, I'll just use a, a new one obviously, because that happens to us a lot because yeah. we're in another country, we're ordering, ordering something somewhere else, our credit cards get declined like on a regular basis. So I put another one in and then I'm like, well, maybe I should check on this tracking number. And so I put the actual tracking number they sent me in and it's like, this is a known tracking number for a scam. And so I've just been putting these credit card numbers into the scam website and then, and then basically I spent four hours yesterday, like having now I, have, more than that. now I have to call the bank and now I have to like cancel like the two or three different cards that I put in. And I just felt like it was such so an idiot. well done though. No, I showed Kaza the site and it even like so the well links done. in the footer, they basically copied the exact USPS site except yeah. for the page that they sent you to. Anything. Because some of the ones you get, you guys they have probably typos do too, and right? spellings, and like it looks like, a little bit pixelated. This looks <sighs> weird, but it felt... was so well done. And it just, it just, it just sucks. I don't know if you guys have, Maybe you some if you I want to write so some like horrible 
um, stories because I bet some other people have some really bad ones. Sound too. like an absolute idiot. No. <laughs> so don't fall for those stupid. <laughs> Okay. And, and and the, the whole re the whole reason actually the reason why I clicked on the link is our friend Eric has sent me a message and it said hey the post office actually uh, re refused one of these shipments because they didn't recognize the name on the address and I'm like oh that must have been that text message I so got they must last have week. known that that package got and then sent either to the email. they they either they knew and they hacked their system or it was just a weird coincidence either I think one, they one know. Of those two those people out there if you're one of them no <laughs> <laughs> all horrible. right we got uh scott scott oh it's hey scott what's going on brother Hi. what movie series are you guys really into what are the entertainment choices oh what have i been watching a lot lately well Ooh, i just like the expanse was awesome brian is really into space anything to do with space or sci-fi world disaster yeah, disaster movies, disaster series. Yep. I'm really into everything fantasy that is as far from the real life as possible. <laughs> think, think teenage werewolf <laughs> magic. With vampires. Meets Harry Potter with vampires or something. <laughs> That's my jam. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. So if you're, yeah, I, re right now I'm uh, watching Warrior Nuns. <laughs> <laughs> I finished watching Ted Lasso. I thought that was hilarious. Oh yeah, that was a good one. And we watched what was the one that we watched? Uh, in what was it called? Uh, I don't recall. I can never remember the names of these things <laughs> that I'm watching. Are you guys the same? I'm just like watching these shows, and yeah. So I don't know if we really have like. Did you really like Ted Lasso? Yeah. Also, that was good. we do um, a newsletter. That we send out and there we usually have like some good things that we've been watching that's true well and people go to what did they, where do they go if again? you just go to svdelos.com forward slash newsletter we don't use it for spam or anything like that it's just yeah. when we put out a video and once a month we send out a little like hey this is what we've been up to um and it has things like this is what we've been listening to this is yeah. what music we've been listening to or what we've been watching stuff so if you're into that svstellis.com newsletter forward yeah. slash newsletter you can sign up there that's yeah. it um okay this is a cool one this is jerry lane uh he says only an engineer thinks stats are fun brian the rest of us deem them only necessary that said how about comparing uh rough days to smooth days Ooh. uh so i did the stats of sailing um for yeah. sailing uh only when we were sailing or an anchor too no this is just for sailing okay uh, so I calculated from Puerto Penasco to where we are now, we sailed about 5,800 nautical miles, oh, wow. which is respectable. We've yeah. done more. We've also done less. Yeah. Uh, if we average about 6.5 knots, which is realistic, uh, that would be, we spent 30 days at sea this year. Oh. And I counted uh, the days that we had. 30 days rough. only? 37 days. That's a long time. That's over a month. 37 days? 37 days out hmm. of 365 days. That's over a month out of 12. Uh, but 12, That's, 19 of those was the... Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. 37 days at okay. sea this year. Uh, we had a rough day. Remember that when we were coming around Cabo San Lucas? That was a rough day. That was a rough day. Uh, also sailing out here was... Oh my god. You guys we, will see in the video. I yeah, was a wreck. we had two rough days on the way to the Marquesas. Uh, another on the way to the Tumotos and two more sailing back up wind back here to the Marquesas. Yeah. So I counted six days in total where I would say it was uncomfortable, wind forward of the beam, 20 to 30 knots or, or upwind over 20. Uh, or lots of squalls that come and go, which then leaves the boat like this. I so, feel like I remember. It's so only six days? It's six days. Uh, it's 16% of the time. That's, that's my numbers mm -hmm. might be different than yours. I don't. I used to, like maybe they used to, like stick in my head and I remember them really like a lot because <laughs> I feel like when thinking back on this like sailing it, it was we've had some really good days though but it's been some especially sailing from here and up here has been extremely bad yeah like mm -hmm. some really horrible beating into 20 knots tends to be that way <gasps> and Sucks. yeah yeah but yeah um michael lundgren asks how much internet are you guys actually using 
Is that a Patreon one as well? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, maybe some stats over how much internet data you've used over the year. Uh, so right now we're using, we've always used about one terabyte a month, sometimes a little bit less. Like if we have a big passage that month and we use less because we're not on the internet, but if we're at Anchor, Anchorage is like this, we're using right about one terabyte a month, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. It's kind of a lot, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if one terabyte, I, I don't think people normally pay attention. But since we're on the plan, both with Viasat and the one that we're on now, it's sort of an all you can eat plan. So we just yeah. use it and yeah. pay. Um, okay. Ari Arseth asked for the solar, how many kilowatt hours generated? Uh, okay, so this is coming up in an upcoming video. I have a 30 day average of 7.3 kilowatt hours per day for solar and about one kilowatt hour per day for wind. So our total would be about 8.3 kilowatt hours per day for everything. So we make 250 kilowatt hours per month. That's about 3000 or three megawatt hours per year. And then I did the calculation. The I looked at an average electricity price in the US according to what I found. It's 23 cents per kilowatt hour. That's as of February in uh, 2023 for the US. So that would be about $58 US per month in electricity we're making. Um, the average US consumption from the EPA website as of December last year was 943 kilowatt hours per month. And we're doing, uh, what did I say ours was? 250. So our consumption is about a quarter of what the a house would be. Is and probably, US. honestly, for both, that's probably really high. Yeah, I, I think, think most so. people have a lot less consumption yeah. than us. Because we don't have like the hand pump toilets and all that and stuff. And our cooking is all electric yeah. and yeah. we have the internet on all the time. We always have two laptops on, yeah. et cetera. That's pretty cool though, to compare it like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Paul from NorCal, Hi, Paul, Paul Grizzard says, how many gallons of diesel fuel did you have to burn versus how many nautical miles of sailing? So yeah, uh, 1,018 liters, 268 gallons, roughly. Um, one gallon, and how much CO2 per year is that? One gallon uh, of fuel, diesel burn, puts in 22 pounds of CO2 I looked up. Uh, equal about 10 kilos. So we're responsible for, for putting uh, 5,900 pounds or about 2,700 kilos of CO2 for the year. Uh, I don't know how that really stacks up to a house. Um, actually, I do because I have it right here. <laughs> David Seabrook, building on what Paul said, how about comparing your CO2 consumption in a year with that of a similar sized family that lives in an apartment in the mainland USA and drives a car? Okay. I wasn't able to find, include a car, but according to the EPA report I found for 2022, the average for a US household is 14,000 pounds of CO2 per year. And that's just for electricity. So our number is a little bit less than half of that. Honestly, I thought it would be way less than half of that, but yeah. what we're including that is all of our transportation. So, yeah. you know, that's Delos that we're going around the world. Yes, we're sailing, but we're also using the engine. We're also running the generator. That's everything all in. And I, I'm willing to bet as if you included transportation, whether it be people in their car or their truck or public transportation to get around that, that number would, would be quite a bit higher. Yeah. So um, I think we're doing okay. That's cool. Yeah. That's a cool stuff. Yeah. Oh, we just got a message from Andy. Where do you store your trash bags? <laughs> so, uh, when when we do a big provision, like when we were in Tahiti, uh, I we take everything, we remove all the packaging, um, and then we dispose of it in the where, where there's a supermarket. There's usually a town, right? So then we dispose of it where uh, we can in town, and then when we're out we don't really create that much trash like and you know everything is then stored on the boat we have a, a locker for fuel um, back here where we usually like pack it really good and then store it in there until we get to a town like this where they actually have really good recycling uh, glass metal plastic everything the recycling here is pretty good it's really good here so i don't know what they do with it i think it actually goes to Tahiti and then it goes somewhere. I don't know. Somebody said New Zealand, but I find that hard to believe that 
New Zealand is accepting trash from French Polynesia. I don't know. Maybe Sweden it's true. Sweden gets trash from everywhere. It's true. So I don't know. But yeah. yeah, that's how we deal with the trash and we store it on the boat and yeah. Uh, Rodney Stringer, is there any place you visited that you would avoid on the second time around the world? If so, uh, why? That's a tough one. There's really so not very, so, Oh, yeah. <laughs> any place where we get robbed, we tend to avoid the next time around. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> or burglarized, whatever. But even, yeah. I would definitely go back to Madagascar and somebody tried to steal our dinghy there. Yeah, true. Um... I, there's a few towns and stuff that I'm like, yeah, like Sorong, the town we were in, which is a dirty town. We had crew fly out or in, so we had kind of had to go there. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't go back there. Um, there is also like now when Sierra is this age, there's probably a few places that I wouldn't go to just because we were only there for solely for diving. And it was pretty rolly and stuff. Yeah. That is very hard since she doesn't dive. Then she's just on the boat I mean, and it's it, rolly. It has changed her. I mean, even here when we were out on anchor and it was, we had the rocker suppers out. And I mean, Sierra was seasick, mom was seasick. It was horrible. So it, those anchorages I probably would avoid for now until Sierra is an age where she can dive with us. Yeah. If that makes sense. Dave Crombie says, I see Maggie's paint is flaking off. As stout as she is, is she still your... I know, it bugs the heck out of me. I know. I just got the primer to fix it today. I, I think what we did, I love that paint. It's the, so good. The Total Boat uh, yeah. deck tread. I think it's awesome. I think... It keeps the decks or the seating so much cooler too. So it's really good. Yeah, I think what we didn't do is enough is that, you know, al aluminum naturally oxidizes when it comes into contact with air and because Maggie was has been in the saltwater environment for like 12 years when we cleaned it off in Panama I think there's this acid like etching solution that you're supposed to clean the, the aluminum with to get all the oxidation off and then you prime it and then you paint it we only did that once and I think we should have done it like longer or a few more times or something okay, anyway, to really clean underneath yeah yeah because what happened is the oxidation formed under the paint and you know how difficult it is to paint aluminum anyway. Yeah. Um, so I'm about ready to redo it. Yeah. It lasted almost two years, I guess. She's still, she's still yes, our I love one Maggie. and only. Yep. <laughs> she's good. Uh, Cal Norton, are you keeping up with Calico Skies? Yes. I've tried to call Grace now. Grace, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> Where it are was, you, Grace? Why don't you her, answer our calls? I know. It was her birthday. Um, and we missed her actual birthday. And then she was traveling and stuff. But yeah. Um, but yes, delete yeah. happy birthday to Grace and we love them and we miss them so much. <laughs> uh, if money was no object, what boat would you buy today? If money was no object, I would probably buy a really sweet aluminum expeditionary boat of some kind, whether it be like an insulated boat, uh, yeah. aluminum construction, super tough, rugged not necessarily a performance oriented boat but more uh targeted for like going anywhere like an suv of the seas uh, whether it be a catamaran or a monohull or something like that yeah um i think a catamaran would fit a lot of the bills if you could find the right design uh that would do that yeah. there's also a lot of nice monoholes out there so mm -hmm. we're looking into it stay tuned on that one <laughs> <laughs> uh where would you go? What's on the sailing bucket list for you in the Nugget? Japan? Oh, Ooh, I would love to go to Japan. I would love to go to Japan too. Yeah, but I feel like I'm not done here yet. Like I want to really spend some more time in the Tomotu. So that's the kind of cruising that I personally absolutely love. Yeah, it's I think we found that clear out. water. It's just calm, no swell, uh, calm anchorages. It's just the, it, the beaches are amazing it it has so many things that ticks my boxes is that what you're saying well that I comes right into this next question oh, is dave levine what was your favorite dive site this year yeah to boat is not <laughs> it was the diving that we did with the groupers in fakaraba sure. yeah that is south, a world class dive spot dave Fakarava. if you can make it to fakaraba it's not easy to get to 
Do it. it. You won't regret it. It's, it's awesome. awesome. We were there during the group responding and it was absolutely insane. Yeah. And the wall of sharks and just like, it was incredible. We will see how the dive is here tomorrow. The visibility is horrific. Like that much? <laughs> but they, some people that we talked to, they said they saw hammerheads and I'm like, do I really want to see a hammerhead? If it's that close to me before I see it, it's going to be like arm's length away. You're like, yep, that's a hammerhead. I don't know. We'll see. Um, any plans to attend the Annapolis Boat Show in 2024? Uh, we would love to. We would really love to. It dep I mean, we, we... I'm just going to say yes. Yeah. We're going to make it happen. I want to make it happen. Yeah. I miss our friends. I know. It, I want to... I haven't seen my family in a while. Like... Yeah. This it year, be, it just didn't work. This year, it was not it possible. It was just too but much. Next but year, we, we really can maybe... We know it. this area a little bit better. I think we can find a place to leave the boat. Yeah. We can maybe take a little trip back to see friends and family and find a way to tie that in with the boat show in October. Yeah. So... Is anybody else going? Do you want to see us there? <laughs> Would you come see us if we were there? Please? Are you getting so close? <laughs> uh, okay, there's another one here. Manuel Frenzel says, uh, what is your repair maintenance time versus sailing time? I don't know. How much do you think I work on the boat, guys? A lot. A lot? No. <laughs> for every day we sail, I work on the boat for 10 days. <laughs> Maybe not 10 days. No. I think but I probably spend no, about... probably ten days actually. How many days did we sail? Did you, you had a stat right? Uh, we sailed thirty-seven days. Thirty-seven days. days. And you definitely no, maybe you. I think you definitely. Do you, th do you think I spend a half a day per week, like four hours per week? More than that. More than that, like a day yeah. per week. A day per week, I so, would say. Yeah. Okay, so eight hours a week, and so that's. 52 days I spend out here or working on the boat in a year, one day per week, right? If we spent 37 days sailing, so can somebody do the math on that? What's what's 52 divided by 37? 1.2, 1 1.3? Don't ask me. <laughs> Maybe it's over for every day sail. Let's just say I'd spend at least one day fixing shit. <laughs> For sure, I think it's more than that. But also, we <laughs> sail 24-7, right? Like, you only work on the boat for like eight hours in one day. You don't work Most of the time, that. I'm just sitting in the engine room drinking beer anyway. No. Uh, <laughs> you're down there swearing. <laughs> and then you come back with a bad back and it's sweaty. Do you watch other sailing shows? Uh, I don't watch that many sailing shows, no. Sorry. The ones the ones I do watch are like our friends, that, yeah. like our close friends. Like, yeah. Calico Skies, like yeah. we sail. I was watching Hilarious. a plucky video the other day. Oh, oh, yeah. He's just, he's building his boat. He's freaking hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah, like people that we know, I feel like I watch a few of those. I don't watch it like every week, everybody. No. Like but that's just randomly lot. to see what, the, to see what they're up yeah. to. Yeah. 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 Uh, Tina Heaston, provisioning, what percentage of fruit, veggie, and meat do you provision for? Huh. Depends on where we're going to and uh, what they will have uh, where we're going. Does that make any sense? Like when we were provisioning in Mexico to come here, I know that the groceries are going to be really expensive here. So for example, nuts and... Um, like your two your $200 canned cheese? Yes, <laughs> my canned cheese that I've been saving. But when we don't have cheese forever um stuff like that that i know it's going to be hard to get here i stock up on a lot but then i know like here they have spaghetti and rice and it's a little bit more but it's not a lot so i don't know what i mean we, we always is buy on. as much fruit and veg as we can store we, yeah we just buy as much as we can fit veggies in the fridge veggies out fruit out and then, if we know we can't go to a store, obviously we, here we fill the like freezer the with everything else. Yeah. And then we always run out of fruit and veggies before anything else because it only yeah. lasts a couple weeks, really. Yeah. And then it's gone. Mm -hmm. I gave it. a pear to Sierra. We haven't seen pears since we left Tahiti. And she wow, was there's so pears here. Stoked. There's apples she was here. Like, a pear? Oh. <laughs> Long time ago, we had pears. I was yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Josh G has a question. Are there better or more efficient dive compressors that would work better for the solar and wind power? Mm -hmm. I think that there's actually a physical 
energy requirement to compress a specific volume of air, right? Like you're just compressing air. I think maybe you can have a little bit of efficiency improvements in different electric motors, but at the end of the day, really you're just compressing air, which takes a certain amount of energy. I think you could have a smaller one, uh, but then you're still consuming the same amount of energy. You're just taking longer to do it. Um, that's my, maybe there's some fancy compressor out there, but yeah. if there is, I'm not aware of it. Yeah. Um, uh, how many cubic feet is your fridge? I don't know. It's our standard one? It's like a bar fridge. Yeah. It's like I would say that it's like a hand. Big. Yeah. It's like I don't... this big. <laughs> it's like that tall, <laughs> like that wide. I don't like a dorm fridge, but maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's fine. It, yeah. <laughs> it's all we it's got. It's not big, but it's not like tiny. Uh, Sorry about that one. I don't yeah, know the numbers on that. I don't know that. either. Um, cool. I think we're coming up on 55 minutes here. Oh, wow. Uh, is there any last minute things? Last minute. This has been so much fun, though. Yeah. Thank you for tuning Steve in. Steve and Key Dunn, tell us more about your house in Sweden that you're building. Where is it? Is it near more more? How big? What is the plan for use? Well, I feel like for the last couple of years, we've been feeling that it would be really cool to have like a home, like a home base, like somewhere where we can have our some of our things uh, that isn't on the boat, like a place to kind of like, oh, we're going to take a break from the boat. We're going to go to Sweden because we have been like pretty much maybe every year, every year and a half something like that we've gone back to, to see family yeah flown back to see family and stuff so it would be really nice to arrive somewhere where you don't live with somebody else. like uh, in like somebody living else's on somebody's house. couch yeah. living out of a bag like yeah where we can like have small things maybe you guys don't no, feel we the don't same, have a lot of things like, but we have like souvenirs we've got i've got all my cool but carvings just have your own bed and be like this is our sofa like we have a big ass nice <laughs> sofa that we can lay in and it's like ours I think that could be really cool. But about the house. Yeah, so the house is literally, um, it's a small house. It's not very big. It's going to be like, you know, like just a hallway and then like a little kitchen and then a living room kind of combined. It's an old house. It's an old house. Um, it, it's like how old? A few hundred years old. It's yeah. got very thick limestone walls. Mm -hmm. They're like one meter thick. Yeah. It's about two meters away from... More Moore's house. Yeah, it's like right next to Mom's it's, it's, house. It's on the property. So it's on her property, and, and it used to be a old oven for baking bread and for yeah. I don't know stewing the wheat or the barley or whatever it was. Yeah. It's probably a terrible description, but <laughs> I moved like twenty tons of stones out of there last time to clear out the oven, and now we've been slowly kind of renovating it, making it livable, putting a floor in and stuff over the last year. Yeah. And so we won't like. Yeah, it'll just be a place where we can just go and it's just there and other people can stay there. Yeah, like, like when we're not there, and... my brother can stay there or, you know, um, friends and mom. So I think it's just a it's just a cool place to come back to when when we want to and um, just to have a little base. And, and uh, yeah. David Levine says, you're not going to finish this without bringing more and more in Sierra out to say hi. Are I you... know. No, we definitely we gotta have go to. Go get them real quick and okay. I'll do a few more questions. I don't know if there's any more questions. There should be some more patrons, I think. Yeah. Maybe. Um, okay. Uh, oh, what, what about like a favorite song? What have you been listening to this? We have been listening a lot to this one song that we love. We, every party we play this song is called Purple Hat. <laughs> the best song ever is by Sophie Here's a secret that you Tucker. probably didn't know about Kaza. She's a secret raver. She bought a smoke machine and a strobe light in Mexico. I asked you to have like, what? what is the best boat upgrade? And I, I wrote smoke machine. <laughs> My best <laughs> and upgrade And Kaza loves year. to dance Sometimes. into the wee hours of the night occasionally Sometimes. with the smoke machine going on full blast. Not very Listening often. to electronic dance music while the strobe lights are going off and Sierra you is like sleeping. You like it as much no, as I, I do. I love it. And Sierra is sleeping in the phone cabin. <laughs> where, where are they? Okay. Go I'll get her. Get. Go get her. Yeah. Um, let's see, this one, would love to hear more about how you keep Sierra safe while, uh, 
while sailing sometimes. Um, okay, so we have a couple of rules and she knows them pretty well. Uh, the first rule is she's generally at sea, she's really not allowed out of the cockpit. And the only time that she is allowed out of the cockpit is with us. And whenever she leaves the cockpit, she has to put on uh, her vest. Um, and she's actually really good about that. Sometimes she'll test us by kind of like standing up uh, on the side of the cockpit and like hanging on and we're like, ah, Sierra, you better get down because we have a very comfortable and deep cockpit. Um, at anchor, we really don't ever let her outside unless we're out here with her. So she stays inside and then when we're out here, she comes out. I'm going over like the rules of like Sierra's safety rules oh, cool. for being on the boat. So I yeah. said, she's not allowed on deck when we're sailing unless we're out there and she has yeah. her vest on. She's not allowed outside unless we're out here. Um, other than that, she can run around she's the deck. She's actually really she good though. She she's... always wears her life vest in the dinghy. Yeah, she's so good. Do you wanna say hi to everybody, Sierra? She's the best. Look at this dress you're wearing. Hi. You're such a big girl now. No, yeah. so <laughs> uh, let's squeeze. Do you wanna do you wanna let more more in? Squeeze! squeeze. Family squeeze. Can you see yourself there? Do you wanna hi. say Hello, say say hi internet? Hi internet. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been doing? Have you been doing lots of swimming here? Nope. No. Nope, no, because the water's brown. What's your favorite color? Pink and red. Pink and red. What's daddy's favorite color? And green. Green. What's Mormor's favorite color? Blue. Blue. And what's mommy's mm -hmm. favorite color? Blue. Red. Oh. Purple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And have you been having fun here? Hanging yeah. out with us? Yeah. Yeah. We're making houses inside my bedroom. You're making mm -hmm. houses inside your bedroom? Wow, you've been so busy. I screamed for you a couple of times. We have all the fans blasting. <laughs> you can't hear anything up there. <laughs> You're building the and Duplo. Mm -hmm. That's so silly. Do you know, what's your favorite show right now, Sierra? Ryan Flack is asking. What do you like to watch? It's Rachel Sands. Yeah. It's like a show called like um, Mika. Mika, I think. And also, what about Gabby's Dollhouse? No, no, no that's not your favorite. So last week. <laughs> oh, gee, sorry. Oh Gabby's Dollhouse is out, and Mika's in. Do you see all the questions coming? People are asking you questions. That's funny, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so silly. Sierra, what was your first pet? You got a pet. I named Pack. Pack it was, was named name? Peg. Yeah, it was a hermit crab. You had a first, your first pet for a couple of days. Then we put him back on the beach, huh? Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite food? What do you like to eat? Apple. Apples. <gasps> Apples and chocolate ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And probably bacon too. Yep. And hard bread cheese. And, and hard bread with cheese. cheese. Okay. Yeah. Sierra, what's the silliest thing your dad does? <laughs> Wait, wrong question. Sierra, what does daddy look like when he drinks too much wine? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because you never drink too much wine. I know, I don't even drink wine. That's the funniest thing. That's, so silly. That's more of mommy's joke. And do you have a lot of friends out here? Yep. What are their names? We don't know. I, that's a good question because I don't know. Actually, Sierra's best friends out here don't, don't they don't even really speak English. So I'm she just hangs out with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Polynesian. Yeah. yeah. And what about your toys? I'm here to play my toys locked. Yeah, you have so many toys in your room? Mm -hmm. Yep. What's your favorite one? Magnetiles. Magnetiles. Oh, Magnetiles Mag are Mag good. Magnetiles are the best toys. I like ever. to play with Magnetiles too. <laughs> yeah. It builds a lot of Me castles. too. <laughs> there we go. And me, and you. Yeah, we all and like you. to play with Magnetiles. Yeah, and you. Dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. We like to build houses what, what together. What has been your favorite thing on the boat, Mom, since you got here? Being together with you. <laughs> mostly Sierra. Yeah, most, mostly, yeah, mostly Sierra. Sierra. Sierra, like all the time. We share rooms. 
Oh yeah, you oh, yeah, they're bunk mates. Yeah, yeah, we're bunk mates. You sleep with more more. We go to sleep together. We wake up together, and it's we have morning so cuddles. Too. He's having morning cuddles. You have to miss it. What do you want for Christmas, Sierra? What do you want Santa Claus to bring you? Toys. Toys? Toys. You told us the other day what you want. Do you remember? No. Don't it... say it. Because I don't want it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you said doll. Is it a doll? Mommy's scared of dolls. Dolls are sometimes <laughs> a little bit creepy. <laughs> but you can have a doll like if you sent, want. Like, I don't know. No. No, you don't want a doll anymore? Dockor är jättefina. Nu kan jag önska sig att det är en docka. Oh, you want a doll? You don't want a doll anymore. Uh-oh. Oh, no. What do you want now? Me. Well, you think about that when I get back to us. Okay. But anyway, um, we are going to head over to a little holiday party on a friend's boat. Yeah. Uh, and have a little meet up with some other people and stuff. So yeah. we just wanted to thank you so much for joining us on the live chat today I and know. asking your questions and uh, mm -hmm. for supporting us and for watching the videos and all that good stuff. Oh yeah, Jordan just sent something that if you want to say, what did you say there? About, yeah, so we made, so uh, a couple of weeks ago, I guess, we finally finished making like the framed sail pieces. So we took a piece of Dello, uh, Dello's sail and we like cut them up and we signed them and then we put them in a little frame. Um, and if that's something that interests you, I think we still have a few left in the shop. Yeah. Like a few, not very many though. Very so few. yeah, if you would like something like that, then go and check that out on, cool. the, on the shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you put your handprint on there too, huh? It has Sierra's handprint. Yeah. It okay. was so much fun. Okay. Well, that's it from us in Merry Nikuhiva. Christmas. Signing off. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy Sending Good lots of love. Good Yeah. Hope Sending you guys love have a great to everybody. Time. And can you, can you tell everybody bye? Bye. Bye, bye guys. Back hey, to the Duplo. Lots of love. Bye. <laughs> Wait. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Are you sure you want to end streaming? Do you want to do it? Can you push the end right there? <laughs>